Henry Fiol says that we should have a scalar chain for communication lines also. The importance should be given to the group interest rather than the individual interest of the company. The remuneration refers to the salary or wages which is paid to the worker. He will be given all the powers to run that company in that particular country. This chain of authority will be running from top level to middle level and middle level to lower levels of management. Hello everyone, I am Purnima, faculty in the Department of Commerce, Vidyashram Pri University College, Temple of Excellence. In continuation of my sessions on principles of management, today we will look into the next principle of management propounded by Henry Fayol. Now, in this session 4, I will be discussing about the rest of the principles of management which was contributed by Henry Fayol. Now, subordination of individual interest to general interest. Now, so this principle tells us that the interest of an organization should take priority over the interest of any one individual employee. Now, we all know that each employee joins an organization with the aim of earn with his own interest. So, it should not become more important. The organization's interest should be more important. Now, what do you mean by general interest? See, general interest refers to the interest of collective interest of the organization. So, here, what we mean by general interest means so it should be the interest of all the stakeholders of the organization. So according to Fayol, every worker has some individual interest for working. So he may come to the job with his own ideas or he may be having his financial needs or it may be his social needs or his recognition needs or anything like that. But then those needs should be subordinate to the group interest. So for working in a company, the company has got his own objectives. So it should not go against the objectives of the company. Now, so in all the situations, the interests of the group will supersede the interest of any one individual. So, what does this principle tell us? The organizational objective should be more important than the individual interest of any one employee. For example, the remuneration policy of the organization. So, now the company wants to get the remuneration at the lowest available competitive cost whereas the employee wants to get the maximum available in the industry. So, we should see that there is a reconciliation of both the interests in the company. Now, subordination of individual interest means the interest of the group will supersede the interest of any one individual. So, the importance should be given to the group interest rather than the individual interest of the company. Now, here they are telling the larger interest of the workers and stakeholders are more important. Now, what do you mean by stakeholders? Stakeholders are those persons who are interested in the working of the company. So it may be the creditors, then it may be the suppliers, then it may be the consumers, then it may be the government, it may be the investors. So anybody, so they are all the stakeholders to the company. So whoever has invested money, he will be interested in earning more returns out of the company. Then the creditors are more concerned about the return of the loans which they have lent to the company. Then suppliers, they will be more interested in having a long term interest with the company. So each of the stakeholders will have their own interest in the working of the company. So their interest should be given more importance rather than the interest of any one individual. So, the manager should see that each individual's interest does not collide with the interest of the general working of the company. So, the general interest of the company should be given more preference rather than the individual interest. So, if you can see the picture here, so the general interest is more important. Now, next one is the remuneration of the employee. 
employees now what is this meaning of this remuneration so the remuneration refers to the salary or wages which is paid to the workers so whatever the pay you are paying the overall pay and compensation should be fair to both the employees and the organization and employees should be paid fair wages which should be given them at least a reasonable standard of living so the wages which is paid to the employee should give them a reasonable standard of living here we should see that ensure that the employee gets a reasonable standard of living and at the same time it should not be a heavy burden on the organization then so it should be within the paying capacity of the companies that is the company should not be overburdened with the salary of the employees then again it says that remuneration should be just and equitable so you should see ensure that the persons who are working are fairly paid and they should be equitable they should be just and equitable for all the employees so only when there is a just and equitable remuneration there can be good relations between the workers and the managers now next one is centralization and decentralization now let us look into the meaning of the word centralization so concentration of decision making authority is called centralization so the decision making authority if it is only in the hands of the topmost level of management we call it as centralization whereas if you give the decision making authority to all the subordinates of the organization then we can call it as decentralization so now we should see what is the degree of centralization what are the various powers which the top management wants for itself and what are the powers it wants to delegate to its subordinates so this will depend on the circumstances in which the company is working so we can see in this drawing if you can see here so this is centralized zation this is centralization so where so each and every one all the employees all of them they have to just contact this main superior so before he takes any judgment so this is centralization so this is decentralization so each one has power so each one has power to take decisions so this is decentralization and see the picture here this is centralization so before they take any decision they have to contact the superiors whereas so they are given with power so they need not contact any one person here so now we have to just think of the degree of centralization so if how much what is the amount of power you will be giving to the subordinates and what is the power you will be keeping with yourself so it will depend on the circumstances in which the company is working now if we can see the circumstances so what are the circumstances or what is the nature of the organization so if it is an organization which has a large labor force then it is essential for the company to have centralized authority if there is company has a lot of intellectuals and people who are very well educated well qualified who are working then it does not require more of centralization we can have decentralization of authority so depending on the nature of the organization the people working in whatever are the activities of the organization we can decide whether we can have a centralized authority or a decentralized authority then in large organizations we find decentralization so nowadays we have so many mncs so that is the multinational companies which are working in more than one country so these companies they will have their own branches or all over the world and each branch will be under a branch manager and he will be looking after the working of that company so he will be given all the powers to run that company in that particular country 
So in very large organizations, there is a decentralization of authority. But in case of small organizations, we can have centralization of authority. The next in the principle of Henry Fayol is scalar chain. Now, what is this scalar chain? So as we all know that a company is bound by the various levels of management and each level of management will have its own chain of authority. Now, this chain of authority will be running from top level to middle level and middle level to lower levels of management. Now, Henry Fayol says that we should have a scalar chain for communication lines also. So, if you can see the example here here we have one employee here we have he is the superior here or and uh, he is the head of a department under him there are two lines of authority from a to b b to c c to d then next he has also one more line of workers who are working under him e f and g now here Henry Fayol says that this scalar chain, if you have to have any orders from A to B, it should go from A to B, B to C and C to D and in the same way A to E, E to F and F to G. Now, suppose there is any information which the worker has to send from D to A, then it should follow the same process. From D it should go to B and B it should go to A. And this is how the scalar chain should work. That is what Henry Fayol was telling. So, in this in an organization, it consists of superiors and subordinates. So, as I told earlier, A is the superior and B, C, D and E, F, G are the subordinates. Now, there are formal lines of authority from the highest to the lowest. So, whatever chain of authority we are having in an organization, we call it as the scalar chain. Now, According to Fayol, organization should have a chain of authority. So, we all know that chain of authority exists. But what he is telling is about the communication here. Communication that runs from top to bottom should be followed by the manager and the subordinates. So whatever communication the topmost superior has uh, wants to tell his subordinates, it should come in this same arrangement. So A should tell E, E should tell F and F should tell E. So, this formal lines of communication should be maintained at any cost. Now, in continuation of this, he also says that change should not be violated in the normal course of formal communication. So, this chain, whatever it is, from A to B, B to C, C to D, so this should not be violated. There should be no violation of any of the principles. So, he says that this formal line of communication should be maintained. But in case there is an emergency, then this communication between employees of the same level can be had. So in case there is an emergency, we can say that D can talk to G. So D can talk to to G. So, whatever information he has to tell, he can directly tell G so that the information can be conveyed faster. Now, this shortcut communication, we call it as the gang plank or this is the gang plank which is to be called as. So, this gang plank through the gang plank, we can see that the information is conveyed faster or you can also say that D can directly contact A in only where? In case of emergencies. So, only in case of emergencies, you can have a direct contact between A and D. Otherwise, the formal route has to be followed. Now, the 10th principle of Henry Fayol is order. Now, what is the meaning of this word order? Order means, according to Fayol, 
people and material must be in suitable places at appropriate time for maximum efficiency so he says that everything and uh, whatever the resources in the organization it should be in suitable places so wherever the machinery is there so everything related to the machinery and the position of the workers should be at their designated places only so only if they are at the designated places only then we can have maximum efficiency now why does order is important otherwise the people will be searching for the various tools which they need to work so and a place for everything and everything it in its place a place for everything and everything in its place means you should see that all the workers should have a proper place to sit in and also if they are working so whatever equipments they need to work all those should be present when he is working in the designated places so only then there will be no hindrance in the activities so only when we have everything in order in the organization session there will be no hindrance of activities so order is very very important whether it is people whether it is material or whether it is machines you ensure that they have a place for everything then the next principle of henry fuel is equity equity means everybody is equal so if you can see this picture here the tallest man is able to see the match very with a good view then this person is having and this person cannot see now this is equality this is equity so equity means so ensure that all of them can see the match so what is the meaning of equality and equity equity means you see that it emphasizes kindliness and justice so you see that all the persons who are working in the organization they should be treated with kindness and justice and in the behavior of the management manager towards the workers so it will ensure loyalty and devotion only when the manager treats everybody with kindness and justice then he can earn the respect of the employees and also the loyalty and devotion towards the organization so it says that there should be no discrimination against anyone so all the employees should be treated equally and this equity principle and how we can treat them equally there should be no discrimination on the basis of religion language caste belief nationality etc so we have to cut across all nationalities caste religion and beliefs and see that everybody is treated equally then the 12th principle of henry fayol is stability of personnel now what does it mean by stability of personnel you see that the employees once they are appointed to the organization they be in the organization for a very long time so at the drop of a hat they should not say i quit i quit i quit so this is wrong we should not have this sort of a situation in any company so once the employee is appointed he should be in the company for a very long time you should see that he has a comfort zone in the company to work the employee turnover should be minimized now what is this employee turnover employee turnover means the employees will be quitting the organization so it should be minimized only if we can minimize this turnover we can get organizational efficiency so for an efficient running of an organization you try to retain the employees as much as possible then personnel should be selected and appointed after due and rigorous procedure so the whatever the persons you are appointing for your organization they should be selected and appointed after due and rigorous procedure that means your selection process should be tough to see that the persons who are weak minded will fall off in the initial stages and only the persons who can endure all this test will remain in the organization then they should have stability of tenure that is they should work for a very long time in the organization and they should be given 
reasonable time to show results. That is, you will give them time for them to prove themselves in the organization. So, how important they are? They should be able to show their efforts to the management. So, for that you have to give reasonable time to the employees. So, this is what the stability of personal principle tells us. Then, Next one is the initiative. So, what is this principle of initiative? You can see here, one person is stepping out first and all others are just standing there. Now, we will just understand the meaning of this picture through this notes here. The worker should be encouraged to develop and carry out the plans for improvement. So, as you all know, the workers have to be given the daily work. So, what work they have to do, what is the time taken and what is their target. So, everything has to be fixed and the worker has to do the job. Now, when he is doing the job, he should take initiative. What is this initiative? That is, he should take the first step with self-motivation. So, he should be able to think on his own and see that he can do the job in the best possible way. So, it is thinking and executing the plan. So, how do you do the job and how best you can do the job that can be done only when the employee takes the initiative. So, what the, in this initiative principle, Henry feels that it should be encouraged. So, if the employee has devised a new way of doing the job, then it should be encouraged. But at the same time, we should take care that it does not go against the established practices of the company. So, whatever is the established practices, we should follow that. But then, if there is any new idea coming in the minds of the employees, it should be encouraged also. Then, the last principle of Henry Fayol is Esprit de Corps. So, what does this mean? It says that management should promote team spirit team spirit. So, all the workers of the organization should see that they work as a team and they should be harmony among the employees. So, each one is holding the hand here. So, it represents the employees. So, the employees should work as a team and we should try to see that there is no conflict among the employees or in other words, there should be harmony among the employees. The managers should replace I with V in all his conversations. Now, what is this replacing I with V? So, replacement of I with me means he should identify himself with the workers. So, whenever the instructions are to be given with the workers, he should say, that we will do the job. We should complete this job within this time. Only if, if he can use, if he, if he can identify himself with the workers, only then he can ensure that there is team spirit in the organization. Now, this team spirit will give rise to mutual trust. So, the workers should have mutual trust among themselves and belongingness. They should feel proud that they belong to this team or they have to have a sense of belongingness to the organization. So, when we do this, it will minimize the need for using penalties. So, whenever there is team spirit, harmony, belongingness and loyalty, mutual understanding among the employees, then there will not be any conflict in the organization. And when there is no conflict in the organization, we can ensure that the things don't go out of hand or there are no indisciplinary actions in the environment. So, when there are no indisciplinary actions, then we can also avoid using penalties. So, these are the 14 principles laid down by Henry Fayol which are relevant even today. So, these 14 principles of management have their own interpretations in this world and these principles are taking their own interpretations and because of which we have seen the emergence of bigger or larger organizations that is the multinational companies which are in existence. Now, next we will see a comparison between Fayol versus 
Taylor. So, if you can see the comparison here, first one is the perspective. So, in case of Henry Fayol, he concentrated more on the top level management. So, his principles are for the working of the top level management, whereas F.W. Taylor, his principles were for the shop floor level of the factory. So, the actual labor, whatever he is working, so his principles are relevant. So, F. W. Taylor's principles are relevant for the shop floor level of the factory, whereas Henry Fayol's principles, they are very, very relevant for the working of the top level management. Then, next one, if you can see this on the basis of unity of command, Henry Fayol says that there should be unity of command. So, unity of command means only there should be one boss and he will be addressing the subordinates. So, only one worker, one boss. So, this is what explained by Henry Fayol. But then in F. W. Taylor's, uh, Taylor's case, he did not feel that it is important. So, why we come to the conclusion that he did not feel it important? So, in the functional uh, foremanship, the worker receives orders from eight different specialists. So, in functional foremanship, if you can just recollect, so we see that there are eight different uh, specialists, that is four from the planning in charge and four from the production in charge who will be instructing the workers. So, this F. W. Taylor didn't feel that unity of command is very important. So, he says that from the planning department, four of them have to instruct each worker and from the production in department, four of them have to instruct the worker. So, he will be taking orders from eight different specialists. Now, next one, applicability. So, how far it is applicable? If you can see Henry Fayol's principles, they are applicable universally. So, what is this applicable universally? Uh, it means that these Henry Fayol's principles can be applied in any part of the world, not only in India, not only in America, not only in China or Germany. So, any part of the world, you can apply these principles of Henry Fayol. Whereas, in case of F. W. Taylor, it is applicable to specialized institutions. So, specialized institutions means those institutions where there, where there is production sector and certain institutions where it requires the scientific techniques of production, only there we can make use of this F. W. Taylor's principles. Then next, on the basis of formation, if you can see Henry Fayol, he has done it based on his own personal experience. So, on the basis of his personal experience, he has come up with these principles. Whereas, in case of F. W. Taylor, it is on based on observations and experimentation. So, he has observed the workers working and he also has done experiments on time study, motion study, fatigue study. So, based on all his observations and experimentations, he has come up with the techniques of scientific management. For example, if you take the example of fatigue study, so Taylor tells us when exactly the worker will be tired, where he should take intervals, what is that level of rest intervals and when he should resume work. So, all these he has done, he has observed and experimented and then he has has recommended various rest intervals so that each worker will give his best to the organization. Then next one, focus. If you can see here, Henry Fayol has focused on improving the overall administration of the company. So, how the company should run and at all levels, we can say that Henry Fayol's uh, principles are relevant. But in case of F. W. Taylor, we can say that there is focusing mainly on increasing the productivity of the organization. Next, personality. If we can look into the personalities, if there is a comparison of personalities between Henry Fayol and 
एफ डब्ल्यू टेलर हेनरी फेवल इज अ प्रैक्टिशनर सो ही प्रैक्टिस वॉट एवर ही प्रीच but in case of f w taylor he was a scientist so because of his uh, scientific method of thinking he came up with this techniques of scientific management he coined the word scientific management then uh, next if you can comparison compare between the henry fuel and taylor it relates to expression so he has written a book so what is the name of the book general theory of administration whereas taylor has written a book on scientific management so whatever may be the case whether it is henry fayol or f w taylor both are very very important to all the management students because these principles are relevant even today now in any organization if you can see that there is a absolute efficiency received from the workers it means that these principles of f w taylor and henry fayol are working so they have laid down the foundation for this basis of management theory and they are one of the most foremost and important management thinkers of our times So we come to the end of the session thank you